Hey, this is Skylar from TheMixingProcess.com and today I want to teach you about pre and post fader. If you've been around mixing and audio for any length of time, you've probably heard these terms but might be kind of confused about what they mean and what they are and how to use them correctly. So I want to walk you through that. But before you can understand that, you have to understand the signal flow of a console or a DAW. Everything that we process audio through has a flow of the signal. And so usually that starts with the input, and then it goes to the preamp, then it goes to maybe an EQ or a compressor or a gate or panning. And then last of all, the very last thing that happens is it goes to a volume fader, okay? And that volume fader is the last step before it gets shipped to the master bus and then out to your PA. Now, when we're talking about pre and post fader, we're actually referring to sends. Now, what is a send and what does it do? So to illustrate that, I'm going to switch screens real quick and we'll use this project here to kind of teach you about what a send is. So a send is when you take the original signal and then you make a copy of that signal and send it somewhere else for processing. So an example of that would be like, like this track right here. So let's say this is a drum track. We're processing a, uh, a snare here and we want to apply some reverb to that channel. Okay, so there are two ways to do that. You can either apply a reverb directly on that channel or you can use a send. So if we use a send, we're going to take a, uh, this and drag it over here and it's going to pop up with this window right here. And this says that we've created a send running from the snare to the reverb. We've told the snare to copy itself and send that copy to the reverb for processing. And that's what we can control right here. So you can see it has a volume fader on it and you can tell it to go either post fader or pre fader. Now, what does that mean? So if, if we've got that signal flow like we talked about and we take something that is pre-fader, that means we're going to export that signal before it is affected by the fader. OK, so where would we use this? Well, let's say that we wanted to um, we wanted to make a monitor mix. We were doing some live mixing and we needed to send, create a mix and send it to the in-ears or the stage monitors. Well, that would be something where we would want to use a pre-fader setting because if you send that before the fader, you can set the level on it. And then no matter what you do on this fader when you're mixing for the PA, that level that you set for the send is going to maintain its level. It's not going to change based on what this fader does. However, if you were going to set it to post fader, it would do the opposite because it would be exporting your signal after this fader. So why would you use post fader? Well, you would use post fader in an example like this. If you sent a copy of your snare over to the reverb for processing, and then you turn this fader all the way down, let's say you wanted to kind of pull it out of the mix. Well, if you set it to pre fader, you would, that send would still be going to the reverb and still be sending snare drum out into your PA, even if this fader was turned all the way down. However, if it's set to post, it's going to follow whatever you do on this fader right here. So if you were to set your reverb levels and then you were to pull the snare drum out, that send would follow the level of your snare drum in this in this fader right here. So that's kind of where you would use both of those different methods of routing. They're kind of two different things for two different applications and they have some similarities so it can get a little bit confusing but hopefully that explanation was helpful. If you've got any questions feel free to ask me in the comments below and maybe even I can make other videos answering some of those questions to help other people as well. Also if you're a new mixer and you're trying to learn how to use a preamp using EQ, compression, you know, setting effects, all of those different things, you can go to my website, themixingprocess.com, and there I have a mixing guide called the seven step mix that you can download completely for free. And it'll give you a systematic approach to 
your mixing. It'll teach you all those different concepts you need to know and it'll give you a system to follow so that you can get quick consistent results in your mix. If that sounds like it would help you a lot, go to my website, themixingprocess.com, download it completely for free, and I think it'll really help you out in your mixing process. Thanks for watching. Again, if you have any comments, feel free to ask them below or email me. You can go do that on my website as well. Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful for you. We will see you next time.